Later. We're live on the internet. We're live on the internet. What is this? Doing show and tell. Uh, I was told to be singing and dancing. They're tonight. singing and dancing. It's show and tell time. It's the next of uh, 25 minutes of joyous fun as people from around the internet show up in their pajamas and show us what projects they're working on. Maybe they even have snuggies. Or maybe they have like those um, cool slippers with like bunny ears on them. Whatever it is, we'd like to see your projects, your maker spaces, your 3D printers, your soldering, your kits, whatever it is that you're working on. We're going to start off with Noe, uh, Pedro, and Scott from Adafruit, uh, remote team members. And then uh, we'll go to Carter and see Scott and any other people who show up. What did you print this week? Hey, Noe, Pedro. Hey. <laughs> Actually, I didn't print anything this week. Isn't that oh, nice? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, um, there's parts you printed for it. Uh, I printed sticks. <laughs> I printed some really nice sticks for NeoPixel nice. strips and made them NeoPixel sticks. Yeah, so last year we did the Halo Energy Sword completely all 3D printed. Oh my goodness, this is Ooh. the Halo Energy Sword from Halo. Uh, so over the over the holiday, um, our, our neighbor who who uh, is a photographer, she she's like huge into Halo. So her son purchased her this, which is a sixty dollar kind of toy from uh, Mattel and it's sold at GameStop. So it comes with LEDs, a whole whopping 10 LEDs. Lame. Yes, I know. So he came over, he's like, hey, I know you do electronics. Could you add some more uh, LEDs? I was like, yes, I can. I would love to. So this thing's pretty awesome. It's got a really nice build quality to it. And uh, it was a good example of uh, tearing something down and adding to it, right? So it's like a mod. So I added 86 that's way better. <laughs> some LEDs. So these are like the mini skinny version. So that's how I was able to fit them in these really thin blades. Um, and uh, I'm reusing the power. Oh, man, it makes some noises too. So I'm reusing the power circuit in here, which is just three AAA batteries. And to control the or to power the NeoPixels or to control the NeoPixels, I'm using just the trinket. And that was able to fit. Please quiet down. That was able to fit right here. So I didn't have to do much. Uh, kind of hacking really it's I didn't have to cut anything so everything fit nicely so in terms of like non-destructive sort of project it worked out really well okay. was making noises again. so that's this week's project I literally just published it so you guys can check it out and um, I hope this encourages you to update your stuff yeah hack so many disappointed um, kids out there who get these things and it's like that is not what was on the TV commercial that was not what's in the video game yeah. but now they have a shot that's right. And of course, we did the 3D printed version, so now we have two awesome options. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if it's like all uh, light up uh, toys. And if it is, we could do a series like Where's the Blink? And then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which, what I like is that you're like the neighborhood, like, like mad tinkerer. Right? <laughs> Yes, I will up. I will upgrade all of your all of your things. I bet all the kids in like the neighborhood are like, you gotta go to their house, and they'll like they'll totally hack up and yeah, improve yeah. and mod your stuff. So that's kind of exactly. cool. Awesome. Okay. Well, that's this week's project. All right, yeah, we'll be playing the video um, on Ask an Engineer tonight. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right, Scott, what you got going on? Speaking of blinking, hi. Hey. Um, nice mic. Thank you. I like this mic. It actually. My headphones plug into there so I can hear myself. Oh, awesome. nice. Um, OK, so I, I'm actually going to show two things since we don't have a ton of people. Uh, the first thing is uh, it's not out yet. Don't ask. This is the latest rev that I have of the Circuit Playground M0. And I just wanted to use it. Uh, this demo that we have here, if I hit capacitive touch, things turn red. Um, it's running the latest version of Circuit Python. Uh, I released three versions last week and a new version this week. So there's lots of bug fixes. It's working really well. Uh, fix some NeoPixel stuff. So that is awesome. Um, plug that. And then I also, since we're not super full, I want to screen share a KiCad thing. <laughs> um, over the weekend, I had this idea of making my own keyboard. Um, so this is a 3D render. It's based on an open source keyboard PCB called the GH60. And I've done some mods to it. So I, I picked a particular key, layout, key layout so I don't have overlapping drill hits, um, which makes it cheaper to manufacture. And then on the back, I put a spot for a feather. Um, so you can solder your feather right here and then have access to the matrix that will be 
connected to all the keys. So you'll be able to use a, a feather to be a keyboard. Okay. So it's a keycad, key, keyboard, keyboard, keycad. Yep. Love it. All right. You're ready to plug into the matrix with your deck. Yeah, it's going to be sweet. I already ordered uh, switches and everything. I, I have to order keycaps, but uh, yeah, it's going to be an awesome travel keyboard because it's smaller. And you also released um, some, uh, some Circuit Python stuff, didn't you? Yeah, it's a, I mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. And where can people get that? Uh, GitHub.com slash Adafruit slash Circuit Python. I posted on the blog as well, and there's a forum. And if you have problems, uh, start with the forum. I check it regularly. I get emails when people post that. So I will help help with any questions and things there. Excellent. All right, sweet. OK. Um, and then uh, we're going to skip around a little bit on John Park just arrived. Hey, John Park. Hey, JB. What you got going on? Hey, so I just published my second in the Mystery Box series this week. And this week's was the Freefall deck. So this is a deck of standard bicycle playing cards. And uh, the idea is to use this in an escape room where it's an artifact that's given to a player or a group of players. And there's some rules associated with it so they don't go picking inside of it. Um, but usually people in an escape room are, are pretty willing to follow the rules. So they'd be told that uh, there's a maybe a kind of a gambler theme and the dealer wants to check out their deck later, but he better not find them tampering with it. So they'll have it on them and leave it closed. Um, and at some point, they're going to come up to a clue that leads them to something like, you're going to need to toss the deck. And uh, it may require more clues than that. But at some point, they'll figure out that they need to literally throw it in the air. So uh, this has a circuit playground inside. When it's thrown in the air and caught, it starts to beep out a Morse code message. And so this is a, a real simple. Um, project. Actually, I got Phil B to help me with the software on the free fall. Um, and I went through a few iterations of fitting a circuit playground and a battery into a deck of cards nicely. So here's a little acrylic housing I made for it that has uh, five layers of three millimeter acrylic. And they're used to kind of sandwich it in there, but still leave a little space so that the uh, speaker can, um, can be heard. And then I got to within like tenths of a millimeter of the same width as cards. So I put in a couple of, uh, of extra playing cards so it's identical. And the weight is also identical. So uh, here's a regular deck of cards and this deck. And there's really almost no way you'd feel a difference. It kind of shakes and moves the same way a deck does. Um, and in the tutorial, uh, this video, I show how to get inside of a deck of cards, which is a little upsetting for people who don't know that this is something that magicians or People who cheat at cards can and do. Wait, what? Yep, yeah, yeah, but there's you know the foil or the cellophane. You can get into there. There's a, a flap on the bottom you get into, and you you tend to leave that little seal alone, and that's where people check. So uh, my tutorial goes over that. Hopefully, no one gets mad at me. But it's kind of a fun little project. And um, I think it was Richard who who uh, tweeted out earlier today. It'd be kind of cool to do an inductive charger in there. Uh, which I think there'd definitely be room to use. We have a little nice five volt inductive charger and one of our little um, LiPo battery chargers because the circuit playground itself doesn't um, have a charging circuit on it. If you used a feather, maybe you could, but I, I may give that a shot at some point so that um, I've done that for, before for escape room kind of tricks and, and puzzles so that a sealed object can be charged without having to bust it open. Um, but that is the free fall deck. That's in it. And we'll be playing that video tonight on um, Ask an Engineer. Super duper. All right, next up. Carter, how's it going? Hey, Carter. Oh, you're, uh, you're, you're muted. You're muted, Carter. But I have a feeling it's a circuit playground project. <laughs> it's a hunch. Okay, now. Hi. Hello. All right, got it. Yes, you're correct. Circuit playground, blinky lights. And this is the winning dance when you win at Simon. So I'll show this off. I got this uh, more or less ready to go, and I just need to write a, uh, a guide on it. Um, and I'll give a nod out to this web page I found where someone reverse engineered an original one. Looks like a post from back in 2009. And this was really helpful because it had 
all kinds of technical details like Neat. how long the sequences were for the various levels, the you know, the circuit board if you really wanted to get <laughs> yeah, that. Level of it's also got the some discussion on the chip in there, but then it's got the the tones, you know. Oh. So you, oh, nice. you know what tones you know for each button, and then even more importantly, a lot of stuff about the timing, like how the game actually changed its timing. So I was able to just use those values and go straight into the code and use it. And also, someone did post a, a decent version of uh, Simon Game all the way back in last summer in the uh, forums. That's also another one worth checking out. Mm -hmm. And there was there's a couple of things in the interface of that one I didn't really like. They were only using like one of the cap buttons and only one of the NeoPixels. And I really wanted to use all of the NeoPixels and have you be able to use all of the uh, the two cap buttons right next to the lights to do it. So I'll go ahead and reset it, and we'll play through a few games. So it comes up in this mode where you can select one of the levels, one, two, three, four of the levels, and that goes back to back at the top. You can see how it says there are four levels you can play. It only says three, but there are actually four. Ooh. So you just pick which level you want, and then I'm not going to do level four. No. no. And then you press start to start. And it pretty much works like you would expect. <laughs> and of course, if you wait too long, three seconds, it goes up. Oh, you messed up. You should have hit that one. So start a new game. And of course, the other way you can mess up is if you pick incorrectly. So I'll do that next. Of course, this is a nice boring sequence there. So it goes, nope, it wasn't blue, it was yellow. And let's see if I can actually win now. So I need to do eight in a row. It's crazy, it's like a Simon emulator yeah. on the circuit flinger. <laughs> we don't want to mess him up, right? Well, he read, I mean, he, he made it. He will probably be able to do it. Do you want to make a bet? Do you want to bet on him? I can do it. I can do it. Uh, uh, uh. No. <laughs> Almost got Not it. Not close. But anyway, oh, wow. you, get, you get the idea. We'll still send you a sticker. Yeah, well, or, well, or just write the guide. <laughs> yeah. It's that tough. Wow. I mean, it's a Excellent thing. work. That is really neat. Um, when you um, do the guide, uh, put a link to that page. I think there was a PayPal donate button. Um, we'll toss that person some bucks who has a donate yeah, button for yeah. that because it, it obviously was helpful. <laughs> I love the I love this like, otaku like recreation. You're like the tone frequency and like how long yes. the LEDs are lit for. You're like I'm gonna do this right. Yeah, well that and that's why that website is very useful. Otherwise, I'd be relying on like 20 year old memories of like I kind of remember it being yeah. doing this and doing that and. And with those values, it, it took no time at all to write the, the program for all it. Right. Well, outstanding. Looking forward to the guide on that one. Good work. Yep. And it's Thanks. on brand. You had the quick draw, the hourglass, the dice, and a Here few others. Games. Yeah, these are all really yeah, neat. Yeah, it's kind of a game. The circuit playground. Yep. All right. OK. Next up, Richard. Hey, Richard. Hey, guys. Um, so I'm dealing a little bit with uh, some more IoT stuff. Uh, I've got the server pretty much all set up, and now I've been working on the individual devices and coming up with code. Um, a lot of this is adapting stuff that's meant to work on Adafruit I.O. and making it so it's now local, uh, working on Mosquito on a Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to, um, well, actually, I'm going to show you, first of all, um, I did get a TV be gone because I'm trying to figure out a way to turn on and off my TV, and uh, this is actually the best way to do it. Uh, they do turn TVs off, but they also turn them on as well. So I'm going to be hooking that up to uh, a huzzah so I can turn my TV on and off. Um, <clears throat> and then some of the sensors and stuff that I have here. Um, so this one I actually just rigged up. Well, let me show this one off first. Uh, so this is kind of a sensor package uh, that I put together um, with the uh, humidity and temperature sensor. And this also uses a PIR sensor to detect motion. Um, I have a, a little app on my uh, device here that is showing the MQTT feeds. Not too sure 
how accurately you can see that, but when I move in front of that PIR sensor, it should change to movement. Uh, and then it streams the data from the temperature and humidity sensor uh, every, like, uh, I think I have it set for every 10 seconds or so. Uh, it's updating. Uh, and this one's actually pretty cool. Uh, so I helped someone out with making something similar with this uh, earlier this week. Uh, and what it does is it just connects a servo up and then... Um, All right, we are on. Um, where's the tripod? There's... Yeah, keep going. Oh, and um, so uh, it connects the servo up and then I have this other app which sends the MQTT commands. So if I press the on button, you can kind of see the servo moves the yeah. switch. This uh, screws onto a light switch plate and uh, it lets you physically turn your lights on and off, but it also makes it so it doesn't cover up the switch, so you can still turn it on and off uh, manually. Uh, so uh, these are all running on local MQTT, uh, and uh, I'll be hopefully doing a write-up with that, uh, along with the, uh, the LED scripts as well. Awesome. Okay. All right. And let's see if we can get to Maya and Kathy, who just came in, and then we'll go to Roberto and see Scott. Maya and Kathy. <laughs> It's a little dark there. Sorry, not quite yet, please. Another few minutes. Okay. okay we'll get back to you. All right. Um, maybe mute the mic while you're doing stuff. Oop. Sorry. It's okay. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Next up, Roberto. Hey, Roberto. Welcome back. I'm Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I hope y'all can hear me well. Yeah, yep. you sound great. Okay, cool. Um, so Monday was MLK Day, and uh, San Antonio, where I'm from, has a pretty big march. Supposedly, it's the largest one. Um, but my employer uh, isn't as cool as y'all and doesn't let, let us off, so I, ha I had to go in, but I felt uh, a need to like make something that would at least make it out there. And so I took the uh, monument that's currently on Thingiverse, or yesterday it was on the front page, and uh, adapted it so that it had um, a hole at the bottom using a open SCAD and turned it into a walking stick. And so this is the one I'm talking about, and uh, there's me with the walking stick, and uh, I ended up making three. Yeah, oh, I don't think your screen share. Oh, silly. Yeah, silly. Let me screen share that. But I imagined it in my mind. Right? But okay. that's Let me take one oh, tab back. Oh, so that's the 3D model that you printed with the. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's the one. Oh, that's and great. I, I made a walking stick out of it. And um, I wanted to be able to send it out there. So I made several of them and uh, reached out to folks and see if anyone could take it. And I had some takers. Uh, and they, they took it out there, and it turns out like uh, some people really liked it and were asking for it because it has the Creative Commons. Uh, yeah. So I just told them, don't sell them, just give them away. Students from uh, UTSA ended up uh, ended up with them, and so I was real happy with that. And uh, you know, I couldn't make it out there myself, but I was I was happy to have something that I made out there. And. Um, and so yeah, so that was that. And another open SCAD thing that I'm working on is uh, is, is a tool that you can use to upload to the Thingiverse customizer, and it currently only supports one SCAD file. So if you're using uh, use statements or any kind of library where where your your stuff isn't from one source, uh, you're kind of out of luck. So the tool that I made uh, parses an open SCAD file and uh, grabs the use statements and uh, almost recursively, I, I ended up using the loop. I didn't write recursive code for it, but that was my initial intention. And so it, it uh, parses one SCAD file and turns it into one well, with use statements and turns it into one. And so here, here's the algorithm. It, it's actually on GitHub already. Um, I totally recommend writing out your algorithm on paper before you just start encoding it because uh, I ended up uh, going down the rabbit hole and just you know scrap that and, and, and went with this algorithm from scratch again and so um, what I'm using it for is like I said to, to have an initial file and then to run it through my tool and you'll get a customizer version of it and so here you'll see um, I have these three use statements in this one particular SCAD file and then the customizer version uh, just imports everything from those use statements and turns it into one so that like that you're not doing rework um, on when you upload your thing to Thingiverse, and uh, so the first the first thing that I used this tool on was a uh, was a uh, the fidget spinner. I'm I'm taking someone's OpenSCAD uh, 
fidget spinner from Thingiverse, and I'm going to add several uh, cutouts to it. And, and the first one I tried is uh, the OSH hardware logo. So I hope to have that out. My, my uh, bearings came today, but they're really greasy, so I haven't had a chance to put them out. i got to clean them. And that's my show and tell for today. Thanks for having me again. Okay, All cool. Right. Thank you so much. And I, and I like your strategy. If you couldn't uh, attend the march, you made something for the people that were there. Kind of goes with the, the Martin Luther King quote you see um, usually every year. If you uh, can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, keep moving forward. So uh, yes, thanks for doing that. You bet. Good stuff. All, All right. right. Thanks Next up, that. Mia yeah. and Kathy, unmute and your mic. And a cat. And show us your cat. And then uh, keep it about five minutes, and then we're going to go to see Scott, and then uh, we got to do Ask an Engineer. So, hey, everybody. Hello. What you got going on? Oh, okay. you need maybe maybe unmute your mic, um, me and Kathy. There you go. What? Wait. Nope. Oh, yeah. There you go. All Marie right. My She's my there new we go. Hey. Hello. She's my new kitten, Katie, and she's um, she's a year and two months old, and we found her in September. Oh, cool. What's her name? Katie. 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 So you're Mia, and that's Katie? And then we have her on YouTube channel. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. You want to tell them about the project? I'm, I use the um, the electric. The snap circuit, and I made the little fan thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So you just launched that from the from the snap circuit. Do you remember how, why it uh, launches off when you turn it off? Um, remember the, the motor spinning holds the fan okay. down. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to uh, shoot it off the more shot? We'll crush your system with the fan blade, but you'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a little notch on the uh, <laughs> on the fan blade that when the motor's turning, it holds on to it. As soon as the motor gets turned off, the fan can shoot up in the air. Hey, Mia, can you show it to us? Can, can, we, can you hold it up so you can see it? Mia, how does the cat feel about this? Does the cat like to... The cat, Katie would watch it, and then I think she would be like, she wants to play with that. She's yeah, back. Zach, she's I think. Back. <laughs> cats, just, cats love electronics. I just saw a cat. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Mia, and, and Caddy the cat in the background. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, hey. Mia, uh, have either the cat or someone in your household email us, support at adafruit.com, and we'll send you out two stickers, one for you, one for the cat. Yay! Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Double sticker. Wait, All right. Wait, bye, Thank you so camera. much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, yeah. I'm going to the cat. Don't you can play with it as much as you want. I just Yay. have to mute this. All right. Yeah. Make the batteries die. Go for it. Hey, see, Scott. Hey, guys. Hey. You know, uh, my son Jason here, he wanted to show you what he did <laughs> over his school break. <laughs> it's something you might be familiar with. He you watch your uh, video show up? Hold up the camera. Okay, so this is the uh, you know the robot that you got. Uh, that Yay! You got, like the at a, a the robot club. <laughs> yeah. Robot club. <laughs> and uh, so I followed like the uh, let's see the live broadcast of you know unboxing the at a uh, at a box, and um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I followed it. I I've got to pull it together, and uh, you know usually I've had to. Uh, Make no, it do, move around. Yeah, make it move around. It's connected to a Bluetooth somewhere, so yeah. I just, I just need it. Did you get Did you get it working in the end? Yeah, he, he got it. To, he's got, he got it to work. Don't don't get out of the program there. He got it to work. Uh, we had to jump through a few hoops in configuring the software modules and stuff because I had just fun. I I had just upgraded the IDE to like oh. one point eight or whatever it is. Yeah, one point eight is like catastrophic. They changed so much. Yeah, well, I got it to go after like thirty minutes of you know, cursing at it, but uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but yeah, he he. Uh, enjoyed building this robot and running it around he wants me to put the uh, you know the john colton uh, uh, song on there still alive which is not exactly congruous with the uh, robot friend but uh, yeah. 
Um, you know, <laughs> he likes the song. He likes to play Portal. So, you know, uh, we'll work it out. You got to make but, it run off a potato next. <laughs> well, it probably could. But um, anyway, you were working on digital filters. I think I've showed you this before. And uh, yeah. this, is a, this is a digital signal uh, processor I built in 1992. Uh, now, this is all hard work because DSPs were just getting powerful enough to process audio at digital rates back then. So every, you had to do everything in hardware. This is my digital filter right here. This is four times over sampling digital filter. You sent it I2S data. It would do the uh, oversampled iterations, and it would send the data back out. And my problem, my slight problem here was down here is the DAC, this little eight pin chip. It's, it's with the, this is a pulse density modulating DAC. And you have to send it a bit stream at 256 times the sample rate. Mm -hmm. This is where that M clock signal becomes important because that's what they use to drive the modulator. That's how they slice it down to the density at the sample rate. Anyway, this chip operates in what it's not really I2S, it's a mode that uh, is used in Japanese electronics called uh, EIAJ. It's the Japanese um, serial audio format. It's almost like I2S, except you have to do a little, uh, a few funky things. Now, back then, see, this is a programmable logic chip. This is an 18V8 made by Lattice. And when you needed to convert formats, you sent it through hard logic because programmed logic just wasn't going to be fast enough. Mm -hmm. So all this does is it does something like it flips the LR clock and it delays the data frame by like two or three cycles. And then everything magically works. So That's anyway, awesome. I'll send you like a high res photo of this because this is a board that I did. This is one of the first boards I did um, in uh, Tango 2 back then. Is that uh, hand etched? Which is a cat. Uh, yeah, all, I hand etched everything up to about, oh, 1999. But uh, <clears throat> I'll send you a high res photo of it because I had to do things like these copper pores. There's a digital one and then there's an analog one. All these copper pores, there's no auto calculation of where the pads are and where I had to draw it as a series of rectangles. So there's like two or three hundred rectangles in this board that when you put them all together become uh, your ground and, and power planes. Anyway, uh, I just signed up for the Adafruit IO. I have a project that I'm going to do that's of uh, practical use here in the house. Mm -hmm. Our microwave oven and our toaster oven share the same branch circuit. And if you run both of them together for longer than about two minutes, it pops a breaker. So I have a, a clamp on AC ammeter that I'm going to put on, I call, I call the I.O. Uh, port a uh, breaker nine in Adafruit I.O. So I'm going to monitor the current draw on breaker nine, and it's going to beep a little thing up in the kitchen if they're oh, both cool. on at the same time, because then it warns my wife to like shut one of them off before it's shut off for her. Anyway, Jason is going to play us out. He is a big fan of the show Stranger Things. Okay. So he What's decided, that, he's going to play his composition here. Just get it going. Just press play. Okay. And he can tell you about this. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Epic everybody. ending to an amazing show and tell. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Noah Pedro. Thank you, me and Patty. Thank you, John. Thank you, John Jason. Thank you, Carter. We're every single right. week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you, everyone, for making this such a fun half hour every single yeah, week. Yeah, we had music right. and games. See how that's going to continue. Bye-bye. See you guys. Oh, look. Oh, look. Nice. Nice, Cal.